the question that we're posing to our panelists right now is, what would be your one biggest piece of advice for those leading their staff through a school build, a new school build, or a transformation project? Um, so I'm going to invite Mike to kick things off. Um, I'm Mike, and um, I'm based in Christchurch. Uh, I'm actually from Ohinehau, which is Littleton, the port, of, port town of Littleton, just over the Port Hills. Uh, born and bred there, uh, fourth generation Littleton boy, um, but teaching being a very portable qualification has seen me work all over the country and in several other countries uh, around the world too. And um, during my career, I've been lucky enough to be able to just take a break from teaching and do various other things in different professions uh, to get that perspective, but always come back to education and, and still love it very much. In my um, 15th year at Waimati School at the moment, and um, as I said before, the um, the earthquakes were a considerable disruption and um, really um, changed the course of my career, caused me to stay there much longer than perhaps I would have, uh, because you can't leave a community in the middle of such a, a complex um, rebuild project. Yeah. So um, you want to repeat the question back to me just so it's totally clear in my mind as I begin to answer it? Yeah. So Mike, what's the one biggest piece of advice that you would give to, to those other school leaders who are yep. leading their staff through yep. a, a transformation project? Um, take a very long, long time and don't rush it. Um, if anything that I learned from the delays that we had, that they were an absolute blessing and it allowed us to go deeper and deeper and deeper. So every delay, every hold up, every ministry pushback is actually a blessing for your leadership um, and embrace the many months and years that you are gifted to make sure that you have the time to go deep with everyone. And what would you fill that time with? It would be making sure that as many people as possible understand the why behind what you're planning to do. Um, and it needs to be a deep and meaningful why. Um, the reason for building schools in a particular configuration um, and saying that it's because we want to encourage collaboration is not deep enough. You need to say, what is good about collaboration? Why would we want to work in a collaborative way? Because you know what? There are many times um, during uh, an instructional day at school where collaboration is not a good thing. So if we, um, if we worship at the altar of collaboration, you're going to end up with one dominant model, um, which overprivileges one very special and powerful way of working. So keep going back over that, that why. Um, our uh, consultation was done and then some other delays happened. So we, we went through a two year long package with students, with Fano, and with staff that involved uh, international travel and study tours and focus groups and post-it notes and um, external critical friends and a whole range of things coming in and it took two years. And then the project was delayed again, but the things were locked in and the journey and the consultation had been done. So it was interesting to see that the community had moved on and the robustness um, it was it was someone else's. It was the parents of several years ago and the children of several years ago. But what was captured actually satisfied the appetite of the then community who then inhabited the school as the actual physical rebuild started. And I was really pleased with that because um, we were up front and said, hey, this was consulted on four years ago and there's been a big churn through. But we hope that there are elements of what you value that you want for your children and you as children want in your school and you as staff want in the place that you work, what came out was still enduring with the refreshed community. So yeah, take that long, long time and always go for the why. And then when you think you've worked out the why, say, be like a three-year-old and say, but why, but why about the why? Awesome. Kia ora, thank you, Mike. Um, Mel, uh, what would you say to the question around the biggest piece of advice for those who are leading their staff through a transformation project? Okay, um, tēnā koutou katoa, ni sambola minaka, um, nā yadangu ko Mel Bland. Um, I'm introducing myself in Fiji and, and in Māori because I'm a fiwi, which is a Fijian kiwi. Um, and uh, my school, Te Uho Te Niko Primary School, is we opened in 2019. Um, in a very, very rapidly growing area of Auckland. Um, just to give you a little background before I talk about my response, um, we're a school with uh, children from every continent and we have 38 home languages spoken uh, by our tamariki. So it's very 
unique, very diverse, and the most amazing place to work in the most amazing community. I feel feel very, very happy. Um, I'm also in a PPP school, so I don't have the property uh, as much as, you know, a normal state school. Um, but my biggest piece of advice, so I'm a first, I was a first-time principal and foundation principal, so I think uh, for me, it was to constantly acknowledge the change leadership process, uh, because any kind of school transformation, like whether it's a building or transforming in another way, is really disruptive, and it is large scale, um, and I saw, I I think you should seek out people or organizations to support you with your own learning around change leadership, because it's not something that um, you may know a lot about. And one thing that really hit me in the face, like literally, um, I was at a conference listening to someone who was an expert in change leadership, um, was recognizing that there's three legs to the three-legged stool when you're going through transformation. So you've got leadership as one, um, people change management, and then project management. And all three of those legs need time and thought and focus. And sometimes, you know, you can get caught up in one of them and forget the other two. So that was um, just a really big piece of advice, I'd say, because, you know, you, you're the role, you're the leader. So you're pivotal to the success and knowing the why and your rationale and making sure that your commitment's really strong because everyone, you're always going to have resistance. Um, and then people change management, I think, was the hardest. People are always the hardest, right? It's like they say the kids are the easy part of a school, but, you know, people change management, that was, and um, reinforcing that and knowing there's going to be a dip when you're implementing, it always is, and then just that ongoing support. And then the, the project management and going back to uh, making sure that your change is always aligned with and emerges out of your vision and values. So that was that was just big learning for me, big advice I would give anyone going through it. Thanks, Di. Kia ora, Mel. Um, the, I, I love when people give little imagery, pieces of things that you can lock in your mind. So the three-legged stool is helpful for me. Kia ora. Um, Ivan, can we, can we come to you next for you to introduce yourself and respond? You, you can, Diana. I'm, I'm Ivan Davis and I'm principal of Western Springs Ngapuna Waioria, um, which is a school of 1,750 students in the Western Bays in Auckland. Our school zone goes right into the Auckland central area. We were quite unique, I think, as a school in that just about the whole school um, was rebuilt was rebuilt under the under the current um, scheme that we worked under. The only part of the school that wasn't rebuilt was really my office and the, the DP's offices and a dean's offices. So that was a real privilege to be able to um, ask some really hard questions. Our board chair at the time, um, his his brief to the ministry was quite simple. What we want is something extraordinary. And uh, I, I think anyone that visits um, Western Springs College and, and, and sees the work that Jazzmax Architects did for us, we, we have managed to create a truly extraordinary uh, learning environment, one that's won um, numerous architectural awards. What, what, I, what I say to people is that as a profession, and I suppose this is true of any profession really, we, we know what we know, and we don't know what we don't know. And for that reason, we're quite conservative. We've all taught in single cell classrooms. We've all been taught in single cell classrooms. And the the, the quarter rule that I um, shared with, with my colleagues first up was that here's me as a geography teacher teaching a year 11 geography class in A4. And my mate Jonesy down the way is teaching another year 11 geography class in B6. And Mike over there is teaching a third one um, in C3. And it's just bloody nuts. <laughs> we, we, we need to be able to work together. And, and, and Mike, the collaboration thing, I think, is, is absolutely critical. So we, we set off on this journey. And we listened to our architects. We took groups of teachers and minibuses across the country, really, to different new schools to have a look at what had been created. 
And then we spent a lot of time with architects and with experts talking about ILEs, innovative learning environments and this new way of doing things. To the point, and this, this for me was gold, where my colleagues came to me and said, Ivan, we've got this. We don't need any more experts. The answers are in the room. So at that point, we were able to put the experts to one side and get out some big pieces of paper and sit down as, as, a, as a group of staff in our, in our old hall and say, OK, what, what are we going to do here? Here's a, here's a footprint. Here's a floor plan. What are we going to do? And we established what we call vision groups for each of the floor levels of this wonderful new facility. All we had was a three-story box on the ground, and we said, how are we going to how are we going to configure this? And the opportunity um, of visiting the school enables you to see that each floor level is completely different to the other because those vision groups configured what it was that they that that they saw as is what they wanted to deliver um, in the way they wanted to deliver it. I also had a couple of catch cries um, to the staff. One was that whether you're two years into your career or 32 years into your career, this will be the single biggest change that you experience. And the, and the second thing is every time you put up a wall, you reduce flexibility. And um, I, I characterize the school as a, as a school without classrooms. It does have some, but very, very few. Um, our kids call it a 21st century Hogwarts because of the myriad of stairs and things going through the, the various um, levels. And um, the outcome, the, the um, result has been truly amazing. I expected maybe 10% of our staff to filter away because it was so new and so different. But... Um, <clears throat> The opposite has been true. People come to me and say, I, Ivan, I could never go back. I could never go back to that single cell um, structure. The Christchurch earthquake, we have to thank for all of this because in 2011, post earthquake, um, the ministry came and evaluated our buildings. And we're, this is a, a, a landfill site and the steel tube piles that the school were, was built on were fine in compression, but lateral strength had eroded right away because of corrosion in the, in the landfill. So that's what started the journey off. We started planning in 2011, Mike. We got the funding in November 2015. We started demolition at the end of 2016 and moved into the new school um, July 2019. There we go. Kia ora, Ivan. Thank you. <coughs> um, lucky last, Mr. Ben. Um, taking a moment to introduce yourself and respond to the question. Thank you. Uh, Kira Koto, thanks very much. Uh, it's a privilege and an honour to be able to talk to you guys. There's a few familiar faces I see in the ring, which is cool. Um, I'm at Shotover Primary School in Queenstown, and on the assumption that many of you have visited this neck of the woods, we're sitting in a new subdivision that was built about uh, eight years ago, or was started eight years ago, um, near the... Um, confluence of the Shotover and Kawara rivers and between there and Lake Hayes. Um, so we serve Shotover Country, which is the new subdivision, Lake Hayes Estate beside that and a few rural areas there. Um, we were the first new school built in the area uh, since Remarkable's primary opened on the shores of Lake Wakatipu in Frankton um, about 12 years ago, 13, 13, 14 years ago now. And then um, there's another school that just opened this year, and I think I saw Tani here on the call um, down in Hanley Farm, which is the new growth area of Queenstown. Um, I've been here since day one, and so that's a touch over uh, eight years now. And before that, I served in a small school in rural Western South in Kōrō uh, with about 150 kids, um, and spent most of my working career in the South mainly because I have family that won't move any further north, to be honest with you. Um, speaking to the question, I I was trying to come up with something different than what Mike said, really, but I can't. Um, but you, you sort of made a reference point. My biggest thing is is, is trying to find what your reference point is, which um, Mike termed as, as what your why is, but you need a really deep um, understanding of what you're about 
and you need that really well articulated. Um, and we used a couple of outside people to help us with that. Um, I mean, one of the attractions of coming to a new school is that you get to choose your staff from scratch. And, and those of us that have been in the game for a while will know that that's probably one of the most time consuming elements of the job is the adults in the place, not the children. Um, because they're a bit irrational, those adults, and they're a bit random and they'll do things that um, when you think things are ticking along quite nicely, it's, it's usually the preempt of something to go wrong. And so the attraction is that you could build this team up from scratch and, and it is certainly a bonus and a benefit. But the flip side of that that I didn't really appreciate until we started getting some of the work is that, you know, we, I think in our first intake of staff, we drew from about eight different schools around the country. So that's eight different philosophies of learning and it's eight different learning cultures and it's eight different experiences about how a school runs. And and you can really easily make some assumptions um, from really small things in a day-to-day -day operation of a school to the big things about learning. Um, so we did a lot of work on trying to understand what we believe about learning and we used Julia Aiken's BPP model in that paper that she wrote last century, which is still current today in my view. Um, and we, we tried to define what our collective voice was for learning and what we believed about learning and how that should look in our place. And a bit like what Mike was saying, just when you thought you might have it nailed, um, we wanted to come back to it. And it's always a challenge because you've, you're, when you're opening a school, you're hitting a hard deadline. You know, those kids are going to turn up on a certain date and that's not going to change. So at some point, you've got to just be happy with where it's at. Good is good enough and it can't, it's never going to be perfect. Um, the other thing I'd say is uh, a phrase that uh, one of my educational heroes uses um, quite often, Lester Flockton, and he, he encourages prof the profession to do their own thinking. So we, we spend a lot of time talking to others and visiting other schools and picking the brains of other people, um, which is vital practice. But in the end, you've actually got to do your own thinking because your, your context is your context, your community is your community, and your collection of humans that are trying to make this thing work is your collection of humans. And so you've actually got to do your own thinking and figure out what it looks like for you. So um, as Steve Jobs once said, great artists steal. So we've stolen a lot of stuff from schools around the country, um, but we've also, um, <laughs> we haven't rebadged it, just put shot up his logo on it. We've rethought about how that looks for us. So do your own thinking, get your reference points sorted and get them really crystal clear. Kia Thank you, Ben. Thank you all. Um, some really good pieces of advice there for those who are in the midst of um, leading their change in the school.